Hey guys, Brian with Jones in to go. And today's video is going to be that follow-up video I talked about in our previous video where we showed you the independent suspension going on our new Montana fifth wheel over in the Montana plant. And in that video, I said we were going to come back to more ride and get a little bit further into the weeds and talk about a little more of the technical stuff on the independent suspension. Now, for everybody, independent suspension might not be the equipment for you. So stick around to the end of this video and we're going to show you some other options from Moride to upgrade your suspension at a little bit more economical um, price point and it'll also give you a smoother ride. So today Hayden's joining us to go over the independent suspension. So Hayden, let's talk a little bit about independent suspension has been around for a while with mm -hmm. Moride. Yes, so since the late 90s actually. Um, we haven't made any major changes to it in that time frame. It's one of those products that we, we got right the first time. Um, it didn't really gain traction until the late teens, so 2018, 2017 is kind of when it really blossomed into what it is today. Um, the roads are getting worse. Um, it's just drawing more and more attention to itself because of what it does to the longevity of the coach. Absolutely, and that was one of the things that if you guys watched um, the previous video of the installation at the beginning of that video uh, when we knew we were specking out a new RV we both Tina and I both had absolute must-haves for this RV and my two top uh, must-haves were the suspension and the brakes and we're going to talk about both of those today obviously um, the independent suspension was a must because we have a rear kitchen and anybody that's been in the RV industry or owned RVs know and when you put something like a heavy refrigerator in the back of a rig, that's where most of the bounce is. Mm -hmm. So for us, independent suspension was a must for that. Not only that, if you've ever broke a spring hanger or a spring, you know what a pain that is for a couple of reasons. Number one, you're stuck beside the road. You don't know who's coming, if they're reliable or not, or what it's going to cost you. And, and we've unfortunately had to endure that. And I can say firsthand they're going to take advantage of you because they know they've got you. So independent suspension being more durable, more hardy, a better ride uh, was just a must for us. Mm -hmm. So now you're kind of getting into the OEMs are installing okay. at the factory. So tell us a little bit about how did that become and in, in, so I know that when our independent suspension showed up at the Montana plant, it was intact, brakes in, um, installed. And talking to the guys at the factory, they were like, this is great. Mm -hmm. It went on real smooth, real easy. Yeah, so um, our backlog is quite extensive. It has been for some time. Um, we were not comfortable with the amount of appointments we had for that amount of time. We're a year, year and a half out to get an IS installed here. Um, what we wanted to do is make it more available that you could purchase it while you bought the unit. Now you can finance the IS with the coach. That's something that we don't offer. Uh, so that opened up that revenue to the folks that maybe didn't want to spend the cash. Um, so that's one advantage of it. Another would be um, just getting more on the road quickly. So you're not going to have to buy the coach, endure, and put the coach through maybe even six months worth of travel. Uh, but what that's going to do to the, to the integrity of, of your unit can be devastating even though it's only the six months. Um, so you're going to get it right out of the gate so your coach is protected as soon as it leaves the factory floor. That's a huge advantage. Um, in, in getting it to the factory level, we had to develop a new way to install the IS. Our, um, our old system, our old way of doing it took two days, three days in the shop, a lot right. of cutting and welding and things like that. Um, the new way of, of installing um, it was only going to take a uh, day and a half, day. Um, so that's a huge advantage, it's just time, one. And then two, we're not welding, cutting, and all that anymore. Um, if we can, if it's an 8K bolt-on, we're gonna just bolt it right to the hangers. We're gonna reinforce the frame. All right, so Hayden, so what are some of the major key features of the independent suspension that somebody shopping for a new suspension or wanting to upgrade their suspension may wanna know? Yeah, so, um, well, first of all, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get a whole different axle you're not going to be reusing any of the same parts you had um, it's all going to be completely brand new so we're going to remove the current axles put this on you're going to get five and a half inches of wheel travel um, as opposed to the standard two and a half that you're going to get with a standard equalizer at the factory level so you're, you're doubling your your wheel travel um, the rubber springs are going to dampen and that's going to give you a much smoother towing experience than leaf springs 
So the, the ride in the coach itself is not going to be near as severe or harsh. Okay. Um, protection of the trailer. So a house is only as strong as its foundation. We believe that. Um, it's yep. proven itself time and time again. What the, what the suspension of your trailer is, is quite literally the foundation. Because when you're pulling this down the road, you're essentially putting it through an earthquake. Um, with that protection, you're going to increase the longevity of the trailer. Um, the IS has a five-year warranty with it. Um, so most people, not all, a lot of people cycle through these very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So that five years hits a majority of our customers as far as the lifetime of their ownership of the coach. And, I, you know, somebody who's on his 10th RV, I can... Yeah, you can <laughs> I, attest. I can attest to that. Yeah. We're on our 10th. We went full-time, so that meant, we, oh, of course, we have to get a new RV, yep. right? Um, and like I said earlier, this one absolutely had to, because we're full-time, mm -hmm. had to have, you know, a good foundation, as yeah. you say. Let's talk a little bit about maintenance. As an owner now, what can I expect to have to do as far as maintenance? You know, with the old axles and springs, you know, we were always inspecting the spring hangers, looking at the springs and grease and bearings, what's what's going to be involved with the independent suspension? Sure, so um, as far as required maintenance, what you're going to want to do is still service the bearings in the same interval, which is 12,000 miles or 12 months, whichever comes first. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't change. Um, so that stays the same. As far as a visual inspection, um, I always tell folks it's a great idea to do a walk around of your trailer every time you stop after pulling it somewhere. Yep, just do, do a, that. Just a simple walk around. Uh, observe the tires, make sure there's no inner or outer tire wear, make sure you're not getting excessive heat or anything like that. That's just a good thing to do no matter what suspension you have on your trailer. Right. Um, the only other real maintenance concern is alignments. So there's folks that will come in and get alignments every year when they do their bearing pack, and there's folks that will wait until they see abnormal tire wear on the inside or the outside of the tire. It's all at your discretion. Um, now you okay. don't have to come back to us for those maintenance requirements. You can go to semi-truck shops. Um, doesn't have to be our shop. Um, anyone that works on the big trucks has space space for an RV. Um, the alignment on an RV is the exact same as a semi-truck trailer where you're adjusting camber and tow. Um, it's just how you make those adjustments. That's what's okay. different. So do you have any like authorized service centers around the country that you recommend? Yeah, so we have a list on our website that is a list of customer recommended shops, places they've been that have done the alignment and they've felt was a good experience. Okay. Um, there are two other authorized installers in the U.S., one in Kansas and one in Oregon. Those would both be what I would consider authorized. The rest okay. is just kind of by word of mouth, um, so to say. Okay, so if somebody got to a truck stop or truck repair place mm -hmm. and that place had a question, obviously they can get a hold of somebody from More Ride. They can to contact More Ride, yep. Our website okay. has all that information on it as well. Okay, so that old myth of if you have independent suspension, nobody can work on it. We've just busted that. <laughs> so, all right. So ours came with disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes. All of independent suspension is coming with disc brakes? Um, at the factory level, yes. Now, if you were to come to our shop and upgrade, let's say you already had disc brakes. Because okay. some guys will get disc brakes from the factory with leaf springs. Right. Um, so we can reuse those. If you want to reuse your drum brakes, that's something we can also do here. Year, but at the factory level, yes, it's it's with disc brakes. Okay, and so obviously, you've been installing independent suspension here at More Ride for years. Yep. So anybody who didn't get it at the factory can still come back. Absolutely. And get that. Yep. And, yeah, and hopefully with um, the OEMs install them in the factory now, it makes maybe it'll shorten that wait time a little yep. bit. That would be okay. the end goal for sure. Absolutely. Great. So as we said in the beginning, if independent suspension is not necessarily for you, Moride does have a few other suspension options for you. For instance, our last RV that we just sold as we come into our new RV, we actually upgraded that suspension to the Alltrek 4000. We also added the cross members to help alleviate some of that lateral stress, stress on the spring hangers yep. because once you break one, that's no fun. Yep. Once you break one, yep. you don't want to do that again. And we know other full-time RVers are out there breaking three, four, five of them now in, I don't know, whatever span of time they've done it on. But we see their videos and hear them complaining about it. So we did that in conjunction with the heavy-duty shackles. And that gave us a lot of peace of mind. And I can tell you, taking the um, OEM equalizers that came on our last Montana off and going to the Alltrek 4000, the difference that we felt, yep. it shocked me because I thought, okay, we're just changing the equalizer. We're not really going to feel that. Not only did we feel it, 
but I could see it. And what I mean by I could see it is when we're going over these potholes or especially railroad tracks, before we switched over to the Alltrack 4000, we could watch that coach just wobble over it. And it seems like it almost just went smooth after that. And so we started seeing a lot less things on the floor, even with the Alltrack 4000. So what are some of the other um, options that people have yeah. other than the Alltrack 4000? Yeah, so kind of the, the 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 more entry level one would be our CRE 3000. A lot of manufacturers have adopted this into their everyday use. So you'll see these come out of the factory level. What you're doing is you're getting three inches of wheel travel compared to the two that you'd get with a standard steel equalizer. Um, we've got some rubber dampening there, so we're going to actually provide some some shock reduction, mm -hmm. um, some cushion, so to say. Um, then the Alltrek, which is what you just talked about. So the Alltrek and the CRE, so that's just all dampening power and shock absorption. I felt um, it. Yeah. I, I experienced it. And, you know, it made me feel good, too, passing that, that RV on to the next owner, knowing sure. they had a solid suspension under it. Yeah. And I think that they really appreciated what they were getting as well. Yeah. So... Um, so now as far as the brakes go, I think what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the brakes. We had D-Max brand brakes on ours. Um, we also had those installed on our last RV. Mm -hmm. Loved them so much, loved everything about it. Um, so we're really happy that, you know, they're on this new rig as well. So we're going to do a separate video on that. Um, timing is everything. Chuck, the CEO of D-Max is actually here today. So we're going to talk to him and talk a little bit more about their products. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell to uh, be notified for that video as well. It shouldn't be too far behind this one and learn about the D-Max brand brakes and why I chose them or why I want them on my rig. Um, and so for whatever your suspension needs are, make sure you get to over to a More Rides website or give More Ride a call. And at the end of this video, also stick around. We're going to give you a little walkthrough of their showroom of all their products here today. So we appreciate you guys coming along and learning about what we're doing to our new rig, why we're doing it. And Hayden, thanks for taking the time to sit down and talk a little bit more about the independent suspension. I know it's no secret among the RV community. It seems to be the talk of the suspension. And I think people's opinions is it's the best on the market. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with that. So I appreciate you yep. coming along with us today and kind of helping do this follow-up video. Yep. And hopefully you'll uh, start hearing your phone ring a little bit more because of it. Yep. So, Thank hey, you. Thanks yep. a lot. Appreciate it.